region long familiar with the sound of airstrikes, there was something unusual this time. On a quiet night, far from public view, deep underground nuclear facilities in Iran were struck with surgical precision. No aircrafts were tracked, no alarms were triggered, the craters left behind spoke volumes, but the platforms that delivered them left no signature. Reports suggest that the weapon used was America's most elusive and potent aerial asset, the B-2 Spirit, or Type Stealth Strategic Heavy Bomber, the only one aircraft in the world that could have executed such a mission, undetected and unchallenged. The Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, introduced in 1989, represents a turning point in military military aviation. It's the first heavy bomber in history designed specifically to penetrate sophisticated enemy defenses without being seen. Stealth is not a secondary feature, it is the foundation of its design. The origins of the B-2 lie in the late stages of the Cold War. By the early 1980s, the United States faced a rapidly modernizing Soviet air defense network capable of intercepting conventional bombers long before they could reach their targets. The Pentagon responded with the Advanced Technology Bomber Program, a classified initiative to produce an aircraft that would render traditional radar detection and thus conventional air defense obsolete. The answer came in the form of a flying wing, a shape first experimented with in the 1940s by Northrop Aircraft. The B-2's final configuration was a refined, radar-deflecting triangle with no vertical stabilizers, minimal surface area, and smooth, rounded edges to disperse radar waves. This design, coupled with radar-absorbent materials and internal weapon bays, gives the B-2 a radar cross-section comparable to that of a bird, despite its massive size. The B-2's wingspan stretches 172 feet, or 52 meters, wider than a Boeing 747. It can fly at high subsonic speeds, with a maximum altitude exceeding 50,000 feet, or about 15,200 meters. Its operational range stands at 6,000 nautical miles, or about 11,000 kilometers. And with aerial refueling, its reach becomes global. Capable of carrying 40,000 pounds or about 18,000 kilograms of ordnance, the B-2 can deliver both nuclear and conventional payloads with high precision. Perhaps most notably, the B-2 is the only aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory capable of delivering the GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator, a 30,000-pound or 14,000-kilogram bunker buster designed to neutralize deeply buried facilities. The MOP can penetrate up to 60 feet or 18 meters of reinforced concrete before detonating, and 200 feet or 60 meters of unspecified material like earth, making it the only viable non-nuclear weapon for targeting hardened underground bunkers like those found in North Korea or Iran. Despite its advanced systems, the B-2 is operated by a two-person crew, a pilot and a mission commander. Its cockpit is equipped with digital fly-by-wire controls, terrain-following radar, and automated threat avoidance software. The bomber is designed for low-altitude ingress and egress, navigating below radar coverage while maintaining stealth at every phase. But stealth has its cost. Each B-2 requires extensive maintenance, particularly to preserve its radar-absorbing skin. After every flight, ground crews must carefully inspect and recondition the surface coating, often taking days before the aircraft is ready to fly again. Yet this complexity is matched by capability. The B-2's first combat mission came in 1999, during the NATO bombing campaign in Kosovo. In that operation alone, six B-2s flew 50 sorties and dropped 11% of all the bombs used in the campaign. In subsequent years, it played critical roles in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya, often striking targets on the first night of a conflict before any enemy defenses could be mobilized. Compared to its Cold War predecessors, the B-52 and the B-1B, the B-2 trades speed and payload for something far more valuable in modern warfare, access. Where B-1s and B-52s are visible from hundreds of miles away, the B-2 is designed to be unseen, allowing it to strike early, deeply, and decisively. That capability, however, comes at a steep price. Each B-2 Spirit costs over $2 billion, making it the most expensive aircraft ever built. Originally, the U.S. planned to purchase 132 bombers, but after the Cold War ended, the order was reduced to 21. 
Today, only 19 remain in service, with one lost in a crash and another held in reserve. Despite its age, the B-2 remains a cornerstone of the United States' nuclear deterrent strategy, serving as the airborne leg of the nation's strategic triad alongside land-based ICBMs and submarine-launched missiles. Its combination of stealth, range, and payload flexibility ensures that it can be launched from U.S. soil and still reach any point on Earth without warning. Its successor, the B-21 Raider, is now in advanced stages of testing and development, promising even lower radar signatures, higher maintainability, and autonomous operation capabilities. But the B-2 will remain in service at least until the mid-2030s. It continues to undergo upgrades, including modernized communications, defensive avionics, and integration with advanced weapon systems. In an era of renewed great power competition, with China expanding its nuclear arsenal and Russia investing in advanced air defenses, the need for stealth platforms has only grown. The B-2's recent deployment over the Middle East, whether confirmed or not, sends a strategic message to both allies and adversaries. The United States maintains the capability to strike anywhere, at any time, without detection. The B-2 spirit is not just an aircraft. It's a statement of intent, a product of Cold War urgency, sustained through decades of innovation and sharpened by modern necessity. Its silhouette may be familiar now, but its presence remains a mystery. It flies without a trace, and it strikes without warning. In the words of a former Air Force commander, if you see it, it's already too late. The B-21, America's ultimate bomber. The United States Defense Department showcased its first strategic bomber in more than three decades at Plant 42 of the North of Grumman Corporation. This is an aerospace and defense company which won the development contract in 2015 and has been developing the B-21 Raider project for the past seven years. On December 2nd, 2022 in Palmdale, California, the world finally got a glimpse of their efforts when the bomber was unveiled at the company's hangar during an opening ceremony. The B-21 Raider is expected to aid the United States Air Force with its countless next-generation capabilities that include long-range missile strikes with a range that is, quote, unmatched by any other bomber, improved surveillance and reconnaissance abilities, and the capability for electronic attacks. The B-21 Raider is also designed to be a daily flyer, meaning it can fly for extended periods of time without needing to be constantly serviced. Although many of the features on this bomber are classified, the Defense Department has made it known that it is nuclear capable and designed to accommodate manned or unmanned operations. The B-21 Raider is the product of 50 years of low observable technology and will be hard to detect on even the most sophisticated of air defense systems. This bomber is expected to be the backbone of the United States Air Force and no less than 100 B-21 Raiders will be purchased in the coming years. The bomber isn't set to have its first flight until 2023, but its reputation has already led many to speculate about its cost. In July of 2016, the United States Air Force declined the chance to release the estimated cost of Northrop's contract because doing so would potentially reveal too much information about the B-21. However, there has been a figure of $700 million attached to the cost of a single B-21 Raider aircraft. This is a rough estimate and may seem absurdly high, but in comparison to other projects, it's actually very fiscally responsible. For one thing, the program's avoided major cost overruns and delays, which have allowed it to stay within its $25 billion budget, something really unheard of in the military contracts world. Also, cost-wise, it's half the price of the bomber it's meant to replace, if you also factor in inflation rates. So this sixth-generation aircraft is actually very economical. The development of the B-21 Raider strategic bomber is another crucial step in the U.S.'s efforts to counter China's increasing military strength. The advanced technology of this new aircraft will make it a powerful tool in the U.S.'s arsenal, but Raider is expected to enter service around 2027, and it will be an integral part of the U.S.'s $1 trillion nuclear deterrent overhaul. This figure includes new nuclear submarines and land-based missiles, and it's intended to match the modernizing military capabilities of China, which is on track to have 1,500 nuclear weapons by 2035. The prospects of a nuclear conflict between the U.S. and China is one of the most concerning global security threats of modern times. A nuclear war would be catastrophic, with devastating consequences for both nations, not to mention the entire world as we know it. 
the US and China both possess large numbers of nuclear warheads, and the use of these weapons could cause immense destruction, with cities and infrastructure destroyed, leading to enormous numbers of casualties. The use of nuclear weapons would also have devastating environmental consequences, with the release of huge amounts of radiation into the air and water. In addition to this, the destruction caused by the nuclear exchange would also cause a massive economic disruption. Industries and markets around the world would be severely affected, with supply chains disrupted and markets crashing. This could lead to a global recession. In short, it's in the best interests of everyone that the full capability of the B-21 Raider is not explored. Nevertheless, the development of the B-21 Raider is an insight into the future of warfare. As a product of the Long Range Strike Bomber, or LRSB program, which was initiated in 2011 to develop new and advanced aircraft that could be used by the United States Air Force, the goal of the B-21 Raider is to carry out strategic missions. The program aims to replace the aging bomber fleets by developing next-generation aircraft that could help the Air Force stay way ahead of any international threats. The development process for the B-21 Raider started in July of 2014, when the Air Force issued a request for proposals for their new project. In October 2015, the development contract was awarded to Northrop Grumman, who were up against a combined team from Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Northrop Grumman was selected for its lower financial estimations and its pledge to create an aircraft that would be easily serviceable, together with low maintenance costs. Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin III commented, quote, we really don't have a capability unless we can maintain it. The B-21 is carefully designed to be the most maintainable bomber ever built." End quote. The development of the bomber was overseen by the Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, which made the process work smoothly and the two teams were able to quickly move forward with the project. In order to make sure that the project was in compliance with its budget, the program was still subject to the nunn mccurdy reporting requirements to Congress, who were required to be thorough in the examination of its budget, as a frequent taxpayer concern is with the government overspending on military projects. In the past, the U.S. government funded extremely expensive military programs that ended up in failure and were massive burdens on the economy. In one glaring example, the United States Navy's combat ship ran into so many delays and over-budget spending that by the time the project was complete, the design was, quote, conceptually obsolete. When the budget for the B-21 Raider was debated in Congress in 2017, Senator John McCain, the then chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, opposed the decision to not make the cost of the B-21 program public. He wanted to reassure his constituency that the program was not just another waste of government spending. He proposed amendments to the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2017 that would have reduced the authorization amount for the B-21 program by about $302 million and required strict program baseline and cost control thresholds, along with quarterly program performance reports and disclosure of engineering and manufacturing development total contract award value. Although this amendment was approved by both the House and the Senate, the provision for making the cost of the program public was removed in a final conference report for reasons unknown. The legacy of this aircraft is yet to be written, but its name is indicative of the expectations the United States Air Force has of it. The B-21 Raider was given its name because Northrop Grumman classifies it as the first new bomber of the 21st century. The Raider part of its name is an homage to the Doolittle Raiders, who were a group of pilots in World War II that carried out the Tokyo Raid in retaliation to Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor, tasked with striking Japan in what would be the first hostile American air operation against the Japanese archipelago. The pilots, led by Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle, flew more than 650 miles to attack their distant enemy targets. Now, more than 80 years later, the B-21 Raider is expected to fulfill the same role in protecting the United States from hostile nations. In a world of rapidly improving technology, people can only guess at the elements of the B-21 Raider that are being withheld from the public. The true capabilities of the bomber may not be known for generations to come, but with the B-21 in service, those generations can rest safe in the knowledge that their country is being protected. In the words of the United States Secretary of Defense, quote, This isn't just another airplane. It's not just another acquisition. It's the embodiment of America's determination to defend the republic that we love. 
It's a testament to our strategy of deterrence, with the capabilities to back it up every time and everywhere. That's what America does.